Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. You are most welcome again this weekend, being Saturday, the 12th of August. We welcome you sincerely to another moment in the presence of God, a moment where God brings his grace upon you and lifts you up. And I believe that for this moment, whatever is an issue in your life, God is raising help for you. As we end the week, everything that is not of God, we end with this weekend in the name of Jesus. Today, we are looking or considering the topic, break the shackle of sin break the shackle of sin and scripture will be coming from romans chapter 7 romans chapter 7 before we read the the word of god i want us to commit this hour unto god in prayer heavenly father we thank you for your faithfulness once again thank you because you are god and at any moment you gather your people you release your blessing your word says, where two or three are gathered in your name, you are there in their midst. We believe you are here. And wherever you are, there is the fullness of joy. There is freedom. There is salvation. There is insight and foresight. There is vision. There is a revelation. Lord, I pray for all the viewers this morning that, Lord, you will deliver everyone under the shackle of sin in the name of Jesus. And you will cause your word to bring light unto every darkness. Father, please, that from this moment, O oh God, as many as hear your word will never remain the same. Thank you for the impartation of your power upon our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you for being there. And let's go to the word of God. Romans chapter 7. And I want us to read together from the New King James Version. It says, Or do you not know, brethren, for I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. For the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband lives, she marries another man, she will be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she has married another man. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. For when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to death. But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? If the law is sin, is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law, for I would have not known covetousness until the law had said, you shall not covet. But sin, taking opportunity by the commandment, produce in me all manner of evil desire. For apart from the law, sin was dead. I was alive once without the law. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was to bring life 
I found to bring death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it killed me. Therefore, the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, and just, and good. Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not, but seeing that it might appear sin was producing death in me through what is good, so that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that, that I do not practice but what I hate that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not do, that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that evil is present with me the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God, according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me? from this body of death. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Brother, sister, like the writer of the scripture says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. We are giving thanks today that as the topic is, break the shackle of sin. God will give you the enablement to break every shackle of sin in your life. Whatever has held you bound, whatever that has not allowed you to live your life just as God has destined you to, shall be broken today in the name of Jesus. I just want you to stay pure. I just want you to believe the word of God as we come along with it to you and to the family members that God is going to do a new thing in your life in the name of Jesus. A dictionary, Miriam Webster's dictionary online, defines shackles as strongholds or barriers in the form of bars, iron, chain, clamps, and etc., etc., which deprives one's freedom, especially by means of restriction of handicaps. That is what a shackle is. I remember at one time when we were told the story of uh, slavery in Nigeria and we were privileged by God to visit uh, Badagri where they used to put chains on, on the feet of our, of our forefathers and taking away our slaves. They will put those chains so that they will not be able to move freely. They will put those chains so that they cannot run away. So a shackle is something that holds you bound. It does not permit for you to move around the way you want to move around. And brother, sister, I want you to understand that shackles are not what God places in you. It's as a result of sin. And I beg and I pray and I appeal to you passionately that because the word of God is coming to you live this morning, you will agree by faith 
and stand up and break the shackles of sin, whatever they are in your life, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, no one can serve two masters. No one can serve two masters. You will either agree with one and hate the other, or else you must be aligned to one. Or else you will be pretending. And once you are discovered that you are pretending to serve two masters, you will be dealt with. So today, by the grace of God, you are going to choose to serve the real master. Not sin, but Jesus Christ who delivers you from that shackle of sin. And as we discuss this topic, I want you to understand that no matter how heavy, no matter how you have tried to come out, as you heard in the lesson, no matter how you have taken steps to come out and you have not been able to do it, that is because you are taking those steps by the effort of man. Today, grace is coming upon you. Today, God's mercy is coming upon you. Today, God's love is coming upon you. And you will stand up and you will be able to come out like Jesus told this man that was 38 years by the pool of Bethsaida. When Jesus invited him and said, brother, stand on your feet. The man said, I don't have anybody. But by the word of the Lord, he stood up and he walked. I pray that you will wake up from where every shackle of your life and you will take up your mat and you will go by the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Apostle Paul uses the analogy of marital law to explain the persistent legality of sin over sinners. Like when a woman is married, as long as her husband is alive, she remains with him. She cannot divorce him. She cannot say, this marriage is over. I am going. That will not be a Christian marriage. But when the husband dies, that means the legal law that held her bound to her husband is no more. She is therefore free to marry any other person. Brother, the law of sin and its consequence consequences exercises dominion over man so long as he commits that sin so long as he commits that sin that law exercises dominion over him you cannot say well um, um, nobody knows that I am sinning yes nobody might know brother you might go to the hidden and commit it but look at it I want you to understand that sin is like pregnancy. A woman who is pregnant, the first day she doesn't know about it. One week, maybe she doesn't know about it. But after a month or two, she begins to see some signs and symptoms. And before three, four, five months, the womb is prostrated. And people will begin to ask her, Ah, madam, it's like you're pregnant. Oh. She will not deny it. Brother, when sin is conceived in your life, sin grows. And when sin begins to act, your actions will tell people that yes you are a sinner listen to me the bible says in verse 15 where we read and it is a very when i read that verse i i, I felt like weeping i felt oh god why should it be like that that verse says for what i am doing i do not understand can you hear that what I am doing, I do not understand. Brother, when sin takes you up as a master, you will not understand. The things you don't want to do, hear what the Bible says. It says, the Bible says, for what I will to do, I do not practice it. Your inner mind might be willing to do something, but the power of sin will restrict you, will not permit you. Excuse me, nobody goes to steal and does not know that stealing is, 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 is a sin. Nobody goes to commit fornication, adultery. Nobody goes to abuse, to covet, to do all kind manner of things that we do today. And you will think that you don't know. You do it 
because you are compelled by a force. Even when the Holy Spirit of God tells you, ah, ah, you are a child of God, you are walking in grace, why are you going to do this? You say, oh no, I'm not going to do it. But when you sit down there, there is a compelling force without a restriction because sin does not restrict it does not compel and restrict at the same time no once it compels you it allows you to go and the bible says that which i do not want to do i practice it but what i hate what i don't want to do i find myself doing it oh what an irony what a a sorrowful kind of life. What a pathetic and a sympathetic kind of life. That what I don't want to do, and I know in my spirit that is not right, but there is a compelling force that forces me to do it. My brother, that scene which you started just as small as it is, in a very small way, it may begin from a minute in a day, it may begin in an hour, you may begin it at any moment, but once it graduates and becomes, it, it takes over your life, it masters you, you no longer are yourself. You will not say, no, I'm not going to do it. No, because it has mastered you. Even when you say, I will not do it, you find yourself going to do it easily going to do it without any res restriction and once you finish doing it that is when you say oh what have i done it's like something has unveiled your eyes it's like your eyes were dark it's like it was it's like your eyes were not seen but once you finish it the devil will leave you and you say ah what have i done God forbid that kind of life in the name of Jesus. I pray for somebody listening to me that God will break that shackle of sin in your life in the name of Jesus. Freedom from sin comes by refusing to be bounded by its, its tentacles. Refusing to commit it and holding to the Lordship of Christ. That is how you can break away from sin. That is how you can say no. Remember, in, 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 in Titus chapter 2 verse 11 where the Bible speaks of grace of God that appears to all men and, and, and gives people salvation specifically it says teaching us to say no to all ungodliness and worldly passions brother, sister, my brethren whether in the church or outside in government or wherever you are and wherever you are working wherever God has placed you you can become a slave of sin if you agree to start it, if you agree to commit it, if your friend says, come on, why are you behaving like this? Let's go on and do it. And you say, okay, you might be doing something, no matter how you are doing it, whether you are stealing through Biro, you are stealing on the, on the highway as an arm robber, as a kidnapper, or whatever, however you are doing it, and you have become a slave today. I want to tell you, God is saying, you can break away from that sin by accepting Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and agree to walk with Him and in Him daily in your life, refusing to do it. When the suggestion comes, say, no, my friend, I can't do it. Remember, I was wondering when Jesus spoke to, to Peter and said, get behind me, devil. I, I was wondering whether Peter became, was now the devil. The idea that was conceived in the heart of Peter that Jesus will not die. Jesus, it will not happen. Jesus knew it was the devil and he rebuked the devil right there. He said, get behind me, Satan. I pray that God will give you the power to tell that idea of sin, to tell that idea that is in your life, get behind me. And once you do it, remember what God said to us in, first, in Peter? He said, resist the devil and he will not stand you. He will not stand you. He will flee away. I pray that someone will resist the devil as he comes with that idea of sin in your life in the name of Jesus so that that power of sin will be broken over your life. It is no longer again saying that many Christians today struggle with sin continuously. They confess today and tomorrow they commit it again. I pray that God will not allow you to go back to that sin you have confessed from today in the name of Jesus. 
the fact is that the bone lingers on as the sins are being repeated once you repeat a sin it is no more a mistake it is a deliberate act you are conscious about it and once you are conscious about something and you commit it brother it will be very difficult for you to come out of it people who have been there can tell the story i can tell the story better for you to come out of it that shackle must be broken and i pray that that shackle will be broken in the name of jesus forsaken sin by denouncing renouncing and be fully engrafted to jesus is the only means by which the law of sin is put to death and shackles are finally broken when you renounce it you have to turn away when you say as we anglicans will always say forgive me my sins every time we come to church and we say the lord's prayer or a moment is given for us to confess it and so many of us in church think that 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 place is there so i can go to commit sin and come back to it again no 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 in in romans chapter 6 he says no that is not the way to live that's not how we should live how can we who have died to sin come back to it again my brother for you to break that shackle of sin is every sin confessed in your life don't go back to it again because if you go back to it the power of that sin comes back afresh and it will not come back to you afresh again in the name of jesus rise to the challenge rise to the challenge that those sins you commit and declare for jesus the shepherd and bishop of our souls as it is stated in first peter chapter 2 verse 25 jesus is the bishop of our souls he is the overseer of our souls you can run to him and once he takes over your life he guards you he protects you brother and sister it is not something that you will say okay god come and do it and you stay aloof no you have to make your frantic efforts to say lord i come in sincerity i regret my past i regret everything that has held me bound i regret it today i am asking you by the power that raised jesus from the dead i am asking you to break the chains brother jesus the bible says there is a name given amongst men that at the mention of that name every knee must 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 bow and every tongue will confess that jesus is the lord there is only that name as said in acts of the apostles chapter 4 verse 12 by which men can be saved mentioning the name of jesus and taking the decision never to go back brother sister will help you to break from every shackle of sin everyone that is living a, a righteous life today everyone that is living for god continuously everyone that 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 you are celebrating as a child of god today took that decision he took that decision because he knew the consequence of sin is terrible and anytime you recall how it has been terrible in the past and how God brought you to light, you will not want to go back there again. So I, I, I invite you once again, brother, if the shackle of sin is in your life, there is no pastor that can declare you born again. There is no any servant of God anywhere that will tell you you are born again today, you are born again, you are born again when sin has taken over your life, when sin has entangled you, when sin has tied you down but on your own as you believe the scripture as god is bringing to you this morning you can say lord jesus i believe that only you can destroy the power and the effect of the power of sin upon my life i repent of every sin i renounce every sin i declare that you are my lord and my savior and as you do that the holy spirit is transforming and breaking every chain in your life and you are free from today the only thing you have to do is to be committed to living a life of godliness i pray that the lord will encourage you to rise against the forces of sin in your life and put an end to every struggle of sin 
Thank you, Father, for your word that has come forth. I pray for the viewers, wherever they are, Lord, as they rise from their, their, their sin with those shackles, break those shackles and release them. Let there be deliverance from everyone who has listened to your word today and is willing and ready to come out of it. Thank you, Father, for answering us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you till we come your way again. Thank you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.